Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is the 28th tutorial in this course and in this tutorial we are going to talk about bitwise operations in C. Now some of you watching uh, this video won't be knowing what bitwise operations are and uh, you know obviously would not be knowing why we have to understand uh, bitwise operations and uh, how we have to perform them using a programming language which is absolutely fine because most programmers uh, do not know it and uh, the reason for that is that you don't have to know right because uh, you only work uh, with integers and you know characters and you know other fancy data types but you are never really bothered about what happens at the bit level so um, if you guys do not have an idea about what binary representation of uh, decimal numbers is then i actually thought about discussing that in this tutorial which uh, would have been fine because it's not beyond the scope of this course but then uh, i couldn't figure out a way of doing that so Instead, I would ask you guys to search for it on uh, Wikipedia, how decimal numbers are converted to binary. And uh, if you guys don't know that already, then you can read that article. There's a beautiful article on it and you can read that article and know it. And there's another article that I would recommend you guys to read and this is uh, Bitwise Operations in C. So search for Bitwise Operations in C on Google and uh, follow the Wikipedia link. And uh, you would see that there are six Bitwise Operations uh, that C allows us to perform using six different operators and um, there are six and we're going to check all of them out in this course but I'm just not going to discuss in too much detail what these operations actually are and uh, what kind of significance these operations hold. So anyway that's the reading I'm not going <laughs> to you know scroll through the entire article for you guys and there are some uh, implementations down there in the, in the article you don't have to be uh, concerned about those implementations just go through the matter and try to understand what these operations uh, actually are and um, how you can perform them on paper if you have to, right? So um, in this tutorial, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to discuss three bitwise operators. In the next one, I'm going to discuss the other three. And uh, I have a notepad file, which I haven't saved. And then I have a file that I've saved using code blocks. It's called bitwise underscore part one dot C. On line one, I have uh, my header file. On line 2, I have declared the main function. My curly braces are there, so I can type in my code. Now, there's another tutorial on YouTube uh, in which someone has discussed bitwise operations. And the guy has mentioned that you need to include another header file, the std lib standard library dot h header file. But I don't think that's necessary because I have performed bitwise operations without using that header file, and I've always uh, been able to do my work. And uh, you know, code blocks or any other ID for that matter has never thrown an error at me. So. Uh, you don't have to put in that header file and uh, stdio.h if you have that one then you're good to go. So I'm just going to take two numbers. Uh, firstly, uh, bitwise operations obviously happen at bit level. So each number in memory is stored in the form of uh, a binary string. If you guys don't know what a binary string is then uh, you can represent all decimal numbers um, in terms of ones and zeros. Right, so whether it's 9 or 47 or 515, you know, you can represent each number in terms of ones and zeros. And that is how the computer stores these numbers and that's how the computer uh, manages, you know, everything in fact. So because the computer just understands uh, high and low, right, so presence of voltage or absence of voltage. So that's, uh, you know, I'll probably discuss that sometime else. But uh, for the time being, I'm just going to take two numbers and in the program, I'm going to store these numbers in two different variables. The first one I'm going to call A, the second one I'm going to call B. So uh, let me assume that A has the value 59, right? And uh, B has the value 32. Is well, Let me take a greater value, let me take 42, right? And uh, I'm going to use a tool to convert these numbers to the respective binary representations. And the way I'm going to do that is by using Google. So I have opened my browser and uh, I'm going to search for decimal to binary converter, right? So why isn't the search results showing up? Yeah, there they are. And I'm going to follow the second link on screen, which is uh, to the URL binaryhexconverter.com. So I'm going to click on the link. And you would see a very simple interface. There are two text boxes. In the first text box, you type in your decimal value, and the second text box, you would get your binary value if you click on the convert button. So uh, the values that I have taken in this tutorial are 59 and 42. So I'll first type in 59 and get the binary value, which is this, 
I'll copy that and I'll put it uh, over here. Uh, and the next value is 42. And uh, I'll type in 42 in this text box now. I'll click on convert and uh, I'll get this binary value. I'll again copy it and put it in my notepad file. So, well, I don't have to save it. So, now we're going to check out the first bitwise operation, and that's the bitwise and operation. And um, I'll just tell you guys in brief what bitwise and means. When you perform bitwise and operation on two bits, then the resulting bit is one only if, if and only if, the bits on which you're performing the bitwise and operation, both the bits are one, right? So, if you would perform the bitwise and operation, on uh, these strings, then uh, just a moment. The first set of bits that we have, one and one, would result to one. The second set that we have, we have one for the first string and we have zero for the second string, so this result is going to be zero. The next value is again going to be one because the bits on which we are performing the operation are both one. Uh, for the fourth set, the value is going to be zero because both bits are zero. For the fifth set, the value is going to be 1 because both bits are 1. For the last set, the value is going to be 0 because 1 is 1 but the other is 0. So uh, I'm going to copy this value and I'm going to go to this converter thing again. And I'll scroll down and I'll see that there is another tool that this website offers and that is binary to decimal converter. So we can also convert binary strings to the corresponding decimal values. We're going to make use of this tool. I'll type in my binary code here or rather I would uh, paste the value and then click on convert and I will see that the result is 42. So the resultant string is uh, the same as the string B and I didn't notice that that's why I use a tool but uh, anyway we're going to use a tool for uh, doing other things in this tutorial and uh, now we're going to see how C generates this for us. So I'm going to declare two integers as I said the first one I'm going to call A and I'll give it the value 59. And the next one I'm going to call B and I'll give it the value 42, right? And uh, then I'm going to use printf to display the result of the bitwise AND operation on these two numbers. So the result of bitwise AND operation on the, why do I have to type in so much? I'll just uh, put in a colon and the percentage D format specified and after the second double quotation mark I'll put in a comma and then I'll type in the first variable name which is A and then I'll type in the ampersand symbol but just once and you remember for the logical AND operation we have to type in the ampersand symbol twice but for the bitwise AND operation we have to just type it once. So you type in A, the ampersand symbol and then you type B and then you Put your semicolon after the closing parentheses, save the file, click on build and run and you see that the result of the bitwise AND operation is 42. So C generates uh, it for you. So the next operation that we're going to check out is the bitwise OR operation and uh, I'll bring up my text file again and I'll uh, remove this string and uh, we'll understand how the bitwise OR operation is performed. So, so the bitwise OR operation results into 1 if uh, either of the bits is 1. Right, so in the first case we have 1 and 1, so the result is going to be 1. In the second case, it's 1 and 0, and uh, since one of the bits is 1, the result is going to be 1. For the third case, again, it's going to be 1. For the fourth case, since both bits are 0, the result is going to be 0. For the fifth set, the result is going to be 1 because both bits are 1, and for the final set, the result is again going to be 1 because uh, one of the bits is 1. So I'll copy this string now, right, and uh, well, as you guys can see, that this string is similar to the string A, right? It's not similar, it, it's identical in fact, you know, 111, 011 and 111, So we know that the result of the bitwise OR operation is 59. So I would uh, go to my code blocks file again and the only changes that I would have to make to this file are I would have to change the word AND to OR here and uh, I would have to remove the ampersand symbol here and replace it with the pipe symbol. And again, you guys, uh, if you've been following along the tutorials in this course, then for logical OR operation, you need two pipe symbols, but for logical, uh, sorry, for bitwise OR, you just need one. And save the file and click on build and run, and you will see that the result of the bitwise OR operation is 59 as we expected. 
The last bitwise operation that we're going to check out in this course is the exclusive or bitwise operation. And uh, let's again visit our text file and understand how the bitwise uh, exclusive or operation works. So the exclusive or results into one if the bits are different. And if the bits are same, then the result is zero. So in the first case, in the first set, we have to perform the operation of one and one. So the result is going to be zero. For the next set, uh, since the bits are different, we'll have one. For the next set, we'll have zero. For the next set, again, we'll have zero. For the next set, again, we'll have zero because the bits are same. And for the final set, we'll have one because the bits are different. So I'll copy this string and uh, I'll go to this tool. I'll put in my binary value. I'll click on convert. I will see that the result is 17. So now let's see if C generates the same result for us. And the symbol for the bitwise exclusive or operation is uh, the cap, the cap operator. And if you guys don't know where to find it, then you have to shift up on key six, right? So this is what I mean. This is what you have to get. It looks familiar, perfect. And uh, I'll save the file. I click on build and run. And uh, there you go. You see that the result of the bitwise exclusive or, or XOR operation is 70. So that's it for now. I don't want to extend this tutorial by uh, you know saying things that are not really necessary. I have a habit of doing that, by the way. I'll uh, discuss the remaining three uh, bitwise operations in the next tutorial. And uh, thank you so much for watching this one. Read that article on Wikipedia if you have any doubts. Or you can obviously put in your comments and I'll try to uh, reply to as many as I can. And uh, thank you for watching this. And um, please subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already. See you soon.